Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock. If you've been following the channel for a while, you may recall that when I was changing the belt on the transport of a 424 Mark II, I had a bad motor, but I am now attempting to fix it. You may have also seen a video where I took apart a Mabuchi 12 volt motor. So I'm gonna use this as a case study of replacing the motor control chip. I've already gone ahead and removed the end cap of the motor, so refer to the video I did in the breakdown of the Mabuchi motor if you're not sure how to do that. And I've already desoldered the three points. So, if we pull that off. I hope you can see that chip is kind of melted. It's so heat damaged that it's kind of cracked. And uh, there's a bit of blackening of the PCB. When I removed the end cap there, there's a brass spring there and that dissipates the heat from there through the end cap. I don't know whether there was a loss of thermal connection between that motor control chip and the end cap and that's what's caused it to overheat or simply that over time heat gradually destroys these. But certainly I've had a lot of problems with this model of motor. That's the Mabuchi EG530KD-2B. They warble and pitch. Sometimes they do it all the time. Sometimes it's only after they've been on for a while, i.e. after this is heated up. But sometimes they'll just stop dead. And this one's completely dead and you can see that it's this chip that's at fault. Now, I'll, I'll put a link in the description. I've done quite a long blog post on my website about the way I approach trying to figure out how to refurbish these. And I found that the chip on this is a C1470H. It's a motor control chip by NEC. It looks like a voltage regulator, but where a voltage regulator would have three pins, this has four. Um, I've been able to obtain some new old stock so what I'm going to be doing is soldering this back in, reattaching the servo PCB to this motor. I'll put the brass spring back in with a bit of uh, thermal paste and a syringe of the kind that you would use if you're mounting a CPU into a computer. Put it back in the machine and hopefully that brings it back to light. Not back to light, back to life. I usually find that desoldering components is easier after you've introduced some fresh solder. Then I'll um, suck away the excess with solder sucker and then in the remnants I'll get rid of with the soldering wick at that point I can straighten these pins and the old chip will come out and you can see just how black the PCB was okay so I've inserted the pins of the new motor control chip through there. I want to get that laid out in such a way that the metal plate at the back is going to have good contact with the brass spring when I remount this PCB inside the motor case. Because integrated circuits like this are pretty delicate, then you definitely want to ensure that there's some sort of heat sink on the pins when you solder them. So I'm going to attach this bit of my helping hand to these pins um, to dissipate any excess heat. I'll solder it like that and then trim the excess pin after I've made the joint. And even with the heat sink in place, you know, I don't want to be heating that for more than a second or two. Okay, so I've mounted the PCB back in the motor, so I'll solder that back in. We've got three points, commutator brush one, commutator brush two, and the electrical connection between the metal case here and the board, which also helps to keep this plastic cap pressed hard up against the commutator. Uh, I've got some CPU heatsink paste here. I put a blob of it on the back of that control chip and put this brass spring in here. Put some more heat sink compound on top. Pretty sure that paste isn't an electrical conductor or likely to do anything bad to the PCB, but we'll just clear up some of the excess to be in the safe side. And making sure that the foam lines up with the space for the brass heat sink guy. Put this end cap back on. 
Okay, I've pressed that into place off screen as best I can just with a pair of pliers, but just to ensure that we don't lose the physical connection between that brass heat sink, the plate and the motor control chip, what I'll do is I'll introduce a little bit of rosin around the edge and I'll put a little bit of solder here so it doesn't come loose. A big bit of metal like this, I'm probably going to want to heat this for a while. There we go. Maybe I'll put a little bit more here. That should stay where it is. Let's put this back into the 424 and see if it's worked. Okay, that's the transport with the replacement chip installed back in this 424. And we have liftoff. A little early to say definitively whether um, there's going to be any kind of warble or anything. I imagine not. I imagine that's it fixed. But, you know, if I do encounter any problems with this modification fix, whatever you want to call it, then I'll report back on the channel. Thanks for watching.